Well, we're having a, a general chat about fostering and doing it in the Isle of Man. There's, like everywhere, I'm sure, there's always a need for more people to come forward. Uh, with me, head of the whole services, Fiona. I mean, some weeks ago you had your, your fostering sort of big push and, and all that sort of thing. But what, what's the situation like in the Isle of Man? Are you short? We're always short of foster carers. We have about 50 foster carers on our books. But at any given time, some foster carers are resting or they're not offering the, the resource that we need because we never know which children are going to come into care. We could have a lot of babies or we could have a lot of teenagers. You know? So we need people who can look after all ages of children uh, and offer short-term care, long-term care, offer short breaks care for children with disabilities. So we need a range of people to do a range of things. I know it's going to be too big a question, I suppose, but what makes a good foster carer? <laughs> uh, I think um, being able to work as part of a team, fostering has really changed in the last 20 years. It's become much more demanding, there's much more training. So you, it's more of a commitment to foster these days, I think, than it has been in the past. You need a lot of patience, you need to be resilient, you need to understand children, and you need to like children, and you need to want to help children. Um, you need to be open to learning and developing your own skill base and knowledge. And uh, I think if you can work alongside us and uh, be open to having support, you know, that, that's the best, really. I know some people who've done it and, and they absolutely got so much out of it as well. Um, and they wouldn't have missed it, I suppose. But I suppose sometimes you, you, you might want to um, get too attached to some children. Is that a problem? Particularly with the little littlies. You know, people who take babies will often get very attached to them uh, because they're all the babies that come into care will always be, will always try to get them home to their birth parents or otherwise they go on for adoption. Mm. So if you're looking after very small children, you're very unlikely to be looking after them, them for any other than a short-term care. So you're always going to have to move them on and that can be quite, quite emotional. But we have some fantastic baby carers so who we support and help do that. And you do an amazing job if you're looking after babies and moving them on to something better or allowing them to go back home once the parents have resolved their difficulties. How do you go about matching the children with the foster carers? The foster carers. Well, we, well, we have a kind of a matching formula. <laughs> we, we look at um, the kind of things that people um, are good at. So uh, we, we do um, like an assessment, a full assessment of people who want to foster. So we get to know them really, really well. We get to know their strengths their weaknesses, the things that we think they'd be good at. And so then we match them with the children that come into care based on that assessment that we've done of them. And then obviously it's what's their own family environment. I mean, if you've got two children already of nine and 10, we're not gonna place a 10 year old in there. It'll be a much younger child. We, uh, because it, we know from research that if you place a child the same age as your own, it causes a lot of difficulty. Yeah. And are the children damaged sometimes? I mean, it, can they be aggressive? Or, I mean, I'm trying to put the, yeah. the, the, the caveats in here that you, it's not open to everyone, I suppose, that can do this sort of thing. No, no. You, um, the children that come into our care have often had the kind of life experiences that have caused emotional damage and they perhaps socially aren't as able. Um, often they've been neglected. Um, often there's some level of emotional abuse, there may be physical abuse. Uh, so obviously, you know, they've had traumatic experiences, they're not going to behave like the child who's had a secure background. But they are children, you know, they do do all the things other children do. So, but they, you may need to understand why they behave as they do. So emotionally, they may lose their temper more quickly. They may not be able to sit still for, for as long as other children. They may not have the same social skills, so they're interrupting. They may go and sit on a stranger's knee, so that you have to teach them a lot of things to, yeah. to help them grow emotionally in the same way as other children. And we talked about being rewarding. I mean, I suppose years down the line, the sort of bond is sometimes when they meet up and they go, oh, thanks so much for looking after me that time. Well, lots of children um, later on, the, the research shows, and through work that I've done with older children, they do remember their um, foster carers and the the, what they got out of those placements and the experiences that they had, which helped them understand what a family life is like. Uh, so, and foster carers, well, we have some foster carers, and the children still go back and forth to the house and say hello. And 
So it, it can be very rewarding. Very. And long-term care, you know, they become part of your family forever. Okay, well, if you want more information, it's 63 1947. And uh, you get all the information there, or, or the website as well, uh, if you fancy being a foster carer. Thank you.